Hey everyone and welcome back to Yosemite Valley and welcome back to Planet Zoo. Yes, it is Yosemite Valley 2.0 time. I told you guys in the full release of this park that this is not the end. And here we are. We are back in Yosemite Valley and the project is going to be continued. I just can't let go of this uh, wonderful park and uh, the FPS are still above 10. Um, so <laughs> there's room for improvement. And today we are going to start something that um, I avoided to tackle for such a long time. But it is time to make the aquarium somewhat working and we obviously have to work with the animals that exist in the game and hence we are choosing the seal and the gray seal at the first because we do have um, a habitat that has been created for the seal but then over time has been turned into the sea lion habitat because at the very beginning, it was always meant to be a sea lion habitat. And uh, first of all, we got some seals, then I turned that into a seal habitat. Then lately, we got also sea lions, and, and so I just put the original animal back in. Um, and so we needed a new space for the gray seal. And I turned the original dolphin habitat into the gray seal habitat. Now, as you can see, it was a lot of work to do um, with the different ele elements in here. But um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Out. So let's talk a little about what I have actually done. So in the outside area you can see um, that I'm going to place down a lot of rocks and this will be this will be one of the main issues I <laughs> I'm going to have throughout the episode. <laughs> Dang, these animals have a very hard time finding the right traversable area. So I was uh, building a lot uh, of ramps and stuff to make sure that they can go here. I cut out most of the trial and error because that was just ridiculously annoying. Um, simply because they need a lot of space to be able to just rob uh, over the ground. But to to be honest, um, even though I like the habitat how it is, it's maybe one of the best habitats to gain a lot of stamina for these animals because they have to go this ramp up and down. Um, so yeah, the outside area is really only meant to be an outside area in terms of uh, enjoying the sun and being outside. I will need to do a couple of small things um, in order to make the life for them a little bit better uh, that I'm going to show you then uh, at the end in the real time part because I've done that mostly off screen because it was a little bit of a fiddly thing to do um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you while it's uh, done so uh, we have two different areas the one is the inside area with a big huge tank that you can see from within the aquarium uh, where the seals can dive and there's like a, a little bit of an Easter egg we are going to talk about also in uh, in this build which is kind of funny uh, it's gonna it's gonna be something that has to do with the lay designer and I remember that we had this on live stream so um, it's also a good reason for you to stay here because of the live streams that we have okay Occasionally, uh, gonna talk about that once we see this now. Uh, my idea was to make the aquarium a little bit more lively in terms of that actually guests will be there and staying inside um, because at this point and there you go this is the little easter egg I found um, yeah if you remember lady had a little bit of a thing uh, with calling the red panda the rat panda oh I don't even know if I do this correctly here but um, the, it was a bit of a funny thing and uh, back then uh, we did something in Kuali that made her uh, game crash all the time because I did something weird and then the game always crashed on her side and I just made this little easter egg and I totally forgot about that we did this on the live stream and uh, yeah already two years ago crazy how time flies uh, but yeah so now this is um and this is the build I'm going to do for today's episode uh, with the seals as I said but man, that was a lot of struggle to get them all walking uh, and rubbing over here. Um, but I like the inside area and so guests can finally enjoy them uh, swimming in. Again, I will show this to you in the real time, but it's kind of nice to see. It's kind of cool uh, to witness how they swim around. And the outside area is also um, a cool little element um, so that the elephant habitat is finally not isolated anymore. This was one of the biggest pain points I had with the elephant habitat. as cool as it is and as nice as I find it the area was super isolated because there was no real reason for the people to go there and I will also do something else uh, to even give them a bit more of a reason to go there like in terms of philosophy this will be a pattern that you will be re seeing reoccurring during the entire 2.0 season of Yosemite um, 
I will fix a lot of problems when it comes to guest flow and the overall logic of the of the zoo. I love Yosemite the way it is, but it has some major problems when it comes to the discoverability and more or less, if you will, browsability of the zoo. Now, as much as I always stress the fact that this is an organically grown park, uh, some of the things would be changed in order to make it a better experience for the people along the way. And this is something we have to pay a bit more attention to simply because we have a lot of dead ends in this zoo and you never want to have dead ends in any type of park that you build because that will keep people away from getting there and even worse from getting away from there again so there has to be a lot more of focus points in here we have to make a lot more um, spend a lot more time to find out how we guide people better um, especially here in this African uh, area that is just on the other side of this aquatic house um, there are some major structural is issues when it when it comes to how you take the pathways and stuff uh, where I have to invest a bit of time and um, thoughts as well to make sure that they uh, you know can use it in the right way possible if you guys have comments about this you can remember you can download the full file uh, before this build um, and uh, give me a hint on, on what you would do. If not, uh, that's also totally fine. But I, I would really love to hear your guys' opinion on that. I know it's been on the workshop for a while now and people have downloaded it. I know it melted a lot of computers, um, but I haven't really received that much feedback on it um, other than that it's looking cool. But as always, the best feedback is also uh, containing a bit of criticism simply because that helps me to improve and I'm fully aware of the fact that this park is uh, everything but perfect there's a lot of things to be fixed and this is why I decided to go for a season two and we might even exchange some of the animals in here uh, in favor of some better suitable animals uh, that will be a discussion for a later time. And um, even though I love the ape house a lot from Haribo, I'm starting to think about removing it. Um, not because I don't like it from the style, as some people have said. Um, I, I think it is maybe necessary in order to fix the guest flow and overall logic of this zoo. Um, we definitely would need a, another bigger backstage area and there is simply no space for it so it might make sense to put it there and um, I also think that especially the gorillas would need a bit more of a suitable Yosemite styled habitat simply because that would fit a little bit more into the overall story um, but I'm not really 100% convinced yet. I might actually talk to Haribo, maybe he has got a very special idea about that, so uh, let's think about that maybe together, I don't know. But at this point I'm starting to think about this to, to fix some of the issues that exist in here. Um, but yeah, so uh, today's episode is, is very cool as you can see in terms of opening up this area here and I love the way how it looks from the opposite side of the river and I'm going to put this uh, gate down here which uh, has a very important reason uh, I'm going to talk about later. Um, I, it's basically an implied area for some some water features and stuff and where a boat can get in uh, but we are going to talk about this in the real-time part uh, that's going to be exciting because I have some plans with this and this will be will be funny uh, and hopefully also helpful now yeah you can you can tell now that this is uh, the, the end phase of uh, the speed build because I'm already starting to put these essential things in here fixes here and there but again as I said there will be some more things I do uh, off screen so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and to um, yeah get the engagement going with the video as it's always important on, on YouTube uh, I would really wish uh, to to know or I'd love to know from you guys um, what is something you would love to see in Yosemite um, I know I've asked that a couple of times but this is your chance if you have to pick one animal that we don't have in here yet that would make its way in uh, please let me know and um, if you are new here and you have no idea what kind of animals we have in here I highly recommend to download the file or just watch some of the older videos you can see that um, but yeah, this would be amazing. And also, if you've got some special ideas, uh, what you're also missing in terms of restaurants and so, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have nothing to say about that, just give me your favorite color for what it's worth. So I make something in your favorite color next time. That's it. That's that's what I'm doing. I, I promise I, I will do this if I don't forget. I probably have forgotten about that in 10 seconds after I stopped recording. But, you know, take it for what it's worth. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I see you after the cut in the real time part. And there we go.
All right, here we are in the real time part. And uh, you can see we are standing here in the African area with our view on the elephants, but that's not what you guys are here for. Um, we will have a look now at the wonderful seal habitat. And as I said, the performance is somewhat okay. -ish. Uh, we are running at around 16, uh, 20 FPS between this and uh, you know for a tour for example that would be absolutely enough um it shouldn't drop below um but i also gotta say i have a lot of running in the background so um i think optimizing uh for you know um making a tour meaning everything else should be turned off and focusing on the game um will still be doable and we've got 2000 uh, guests in the zoo right now um i could go lower um but i think i still want to have at least somewhat of traffic in here but yeah um again this is not what you're here for now this is the area we are looking at right now and that is the seal area um on the outside and you can see there are a couple of things um, I want to mention now first of all look at that one just lying right in front of us are just looking so cool we can we can just see that one right in front of us and uh, just chilling enjoying the sun and we've got the big ball here which you can play with and we've got the ramp that leads all the way inside which we're going to have a look at in a second as well now if we continue going here we we see there is a little bit of a recreation area here that i put here it's completely new and behind that is going to go down into the elephant area again um it feels a lot more integrated now and a lot more better uh, on here i just put one uh, seal uh, thing in here and a little bit of a fishy thing i I imagine this could be like somewhat the nutrition of them even though it isn't but um, I will put something else in here so this this is just to mention and then we've got the underground view again uh, I will use the memorials also as uh, as little um, uh, education plates as well I will need to make all these arts uh, during during the creation of it I haven't done this yet in a couple of days because I didn't have the time. And also, I have my coffee with me and I will shamelessly drink some coffee right now um, in order to keep my voice running. And also, mm, I just like coffee, you know? Um, there's a big boy coming down. Maybe it's going to be uh, in here for a swim. Then we can actually see them dive in here. Um, I love the little, you know, a security rope, whatever this is going to be called, is it like a? It's not really a railing. It's like a, just a rope fence to keep them away from touching actually the glass. And made some custom uh, little steel beam on top here. Look at that. Is there one coming? Or are you going upwards? I think you're coming to go for a swim, right? Are you just going to swim for us? Let me have a look. Also, I'm very sorry for my nosy. Oh my god, it's just fooling us. Uh, for my nosy voice, it's just the pollen algae hitting hard already. Um, it's crazy. Now, let's have a look if we can catch one later. But yeah, if we go over here, you can see there's even more area where they can dive in. A bit of an outside area, so you have a bit of a nice view also in daytime light. Now, we're just going to sprint a little bit around here. Um, the big, cool aquatic house sign. Just love all these signs. I'm, I'm still very happy with what you guys did here. It's just looking phenomenal. Um, and then we go into the aquarium. If you guys haven't seen that one, uh, it's in the list. And if I remember, I will put actually the uh, link to the episodes in. Uh, funny side note, I haven't done the barriers yet. I could definitely put some barriers down so to keep them from running uh, through this thing, as you just saw. Uh, but also, uh, these little bubble details are still something I like a lot. Now, let's go quickly in and then I will uh, take the shortcut because the, otherwise this will take an enormous amount of time until we are there because this is a walkway that is meant to be explored. Uh, you know what, we're just going to take the staircase here. Let's just do this, okay? You're going to go upstairs here, then we've got the walk over you can see into some of those uh, aquariums down here but they should not be of interest right now there's this big whale skeleton up here then we just quickly run past the stingray pool no oh my god no we just uh, we just came up on a can i just get down somehow oh, i can't i'll be back with you in a second guys all right, we're back in business. <laughs> I just needed to find someone new to give me the Tajit cam. And uh, it's it's going to get a lot more crowdy over here. It seems like the seals are really attracting people, um, which is which is good. Um, this is also the Stingray Pond over here. If we uh, have a little look down, there's obviously no Stingray in because we don't have any Stingrays in the game. Um, but yeah, let's just speed up the whole process a little bit because we want to get there in time. Now, this is the access to the backstage area, which we're going to get to, but we are 
are going to take a different route there um, for several reasons because I did some things, which is kind of cool. Now let's, oops, uh, let's wait for the lag. Oh God, I have to do a lot with barriers. Um, and then we go finally downstairs here. You can see there's the big whale statue, but if we come over here, this is now the underground view of the, which is now the seal area. It used to be the dolphin area, but this now is the seal area. And you can see this is uh, the big pool and there's just one coming swim, uh, swimming by. How cool is that? Look at this. Look at that. This is so perfect. This is so perfect, just swimming over there. And um, in fact, uh, what Frontier did here with the changes to the diving, um, this works wonders for this habitat because uh, initially they used the four meter swim uh, you know, a requirement. Now the seals only have a three meter depth requirement. That means uh, they are diving a lot more in this wonderful habitat now than they used to before. Let me also show you something very nice and we're going to do this at nighttime real quick because once I did this, I also spent a bit of time uh, making lighting and there you go look at that it, it looks even cooler now with the lighting in here and there is something special I want to show you now oh, look at that with the camera and stuff oh my god that was just such a perfect frame that was so much uh, perfection look at all this I love I love that it's really really cool uh, we've got an outdoor inside area and uh, the inside area looks still very cool. Again, it was planned for the dolphins, but I think it works even better for the seals now. Um, also, space-wise, it works a lot better. And yeah, um, obviously it was a big advantage that most of it has already been done. But uh, nevertheless, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Let's go back to the right time of day something like that i also like the have you seen the haziness in between that looks really cool as well now let's turn around and go somewhere backstage um this is also another access because uh, you know we want to have a lot of access to there and so this is why um we have a lot of gates but we are not going to use that door um we are going to use the actual access uh, backstage access in order to show you something so this is where the backstage goes and i'm gonna go in here and oops this is i have to go a little bit further in there you go it's all actually designed and there's like a letter and i've done this you know i've not done this yet but um this is part of it and now it finally gets the reason and then go around and you can see this is the um you know backstage area with a lot of uh, pumping and a lot of piping and everything is connected to the different pools and yeah we've got a note uh, block here everything important and uh, if we go further in you can see there is a a lot of different facilities if we check over here there is a locker room a little staff room on this side um, there's another room behind here there are some more rooms over here as you can see there's a little kitchen and if we go here there's another kitchen so that everything is being prepared and now the coolest bit of all of this is and i haven't, I haven't done the the, the gate yet but I have to redo this element because I needed to connect that so imagine there is a gate here and we go in here and then we just go out of here and then we are on this ladder Oop. and exactly that happened what should not have happened oh my god ah, let's quickly do it that way I'm too lazy to do that again uh, we are going to fly in real quick um so for whatever reason this seems to be a bit broken over here looks a bit weird let me just quickly there was a fix to that and i have no idea why it's not working anymore so let me just do this again and again and i think now they should be able to walk there again no they're not okay i gotta have to fix this for whatever reason they now get stuck here um it's not meant to be that way and usually they don't as you can see usually it works good um yeah maybe i have to widen the path anyways a uh, little bit of an issue here but this is what you get when you use the smallest uh, pathways uh, it's a bit of a, a bit of a tricky thing to do but yeah so this is this is just uh, it for the moment let me see if we have uh, one Tagit cam option here. So I'm gonna go quickly back into the Tagit cam. I'm gonna use you now. Trudy is going to be our Tagit cam. Tagit cam, there you go. I'm just inside of you. I didn't want to do this. So let's hit play and follow this dude inside of the habitat. What we're we just doing and boom, there you go. And there are a couple of things that I've done that haven't been in the time lapse. So you can see there is a weird platform in front of us and there is a, a little um, switch and that in fact is a an elevator 
because, as I said, these animals would have a hard time to get up and down. So, um, my idea is that this habitat could actually be separated into two different ones if we need to do so, or we can move them up and down quicker with the elevator, just putting them on top here and then just going up and down um, in order to be a bit more uh, flexible and stuff like that. Now, we have got more access to here. This is where we get back to the stingray pool. Everything is interconnected. And this is one big thing I learned from the Burger Zoo when we've been there on a tour with a Planet Zoo team or crew or however you want to call this. We've been in the Burger Zoo. We got a backstage tour and they have this big sale for the deep sea uh, tank for the sharks. And there's a little trick you can see. I um, made kind of a replica of that. So what works is basically the... Um, uh, all the all the different lights, they have a big shine on the sail, and now the sail just casts the light down into the water, but it makes the the light go a bit dimmer uh, the further it's going in the back, and this is what creates the effect of making this appear way deeper and way further into the back than it is, because you can't actually see the back side of the habitat, and this gives you the feeling of the deep sea, and this is what I wanted to recreate over here. Unfortunately, I needed to use these big floodlights to actually. Create create the effect because the emission, you know, the lighting is not that crazily accurate that the, the emissive light from these sails would do the same trick as in real life, but you get the idea, you know, it just, it just works. So I'm going to put this back to uh, around 1500 is a good time for this habitat and I'm going to use this little pathway over here. You can see there's like a little ramp over here. There is like a flexible gate that you can just go through. It can slide through. You can see in the ground, uh, you've got the chance to slide this gate through and then it just connects and closes that up. Actually, it looks kind of cool to look outside of this one, to be honest. Um, yeah, you can also go here and have a look outside. This is all backstage, you know, there's like a couple of utilities or toys. And then you can even access this planter if needed. Uh, you can see the sail, how it is uh, built from the back sides. So everything is kind of accurate in here, to be honest. Uh, I like this quite a lot. And if we go over here, there's, there's the ramp also for the, it's very important for the keeper as well. You can see some enjoying the time outside. And here also a couple of things changed. Now there is also a hidden gate over here, which connects to where the um, elevator is. And also what we do also have is, and you can't really see that from everywhere else, but there is also another gate in which they can dive uh, through into the backstage area. So everything is somewhat connected and you can see from the height level that it works pretty well. This is this is height level from the water and you can see this is almost like ground level with this thing. And then um, if they go in here, they have this little water, po uh, water pool running out here. So they can also just jump out of the water and they're in a backstage area. So everything just kind of works and I am very happy about this. Now, let me jump out of Tangent Cam and show you this habitat from this side again. So, <clears throat> this is the finished product, as I said. However, there are a couple of things that make it more special than it might seem at the first glance. Oh, also, you might have noticed I, uh, you know, I got rid of the second pool because I, it just was a little bit too much because they can't use it anyways. I found this a nice idea for them to splash a little bit, but, you know, it's just the way it is. Um, but I'm just going to pause the game so we have a bit of a nicer, because from, you know, third person perspective, it looks all a bit more, uh, you know, shaky. It's not really that fluid. Now, I made this gate over here, as I said, and there are a couple of things to why this is. Now, I talked about this in the speed build that I need to redo a couple of things in this zoo. And... Primarily, there is a big issue with access to some of the areas and especially what comes around with deliveries and stuff. And especially this Africa area is a big pain <clears throat> for me. You can see there is a non-functional backstage area that I haven't designed yet. So this will be a, bit par a big part of the revamp. Um, and mainly, if you see, this is where everything would be arriving. There is not really a chance or a big main road that connects to this area. So everything goes a lot more tight over here or into the entrance of the aquatic house. But there is not really that big of a road that goes here. If I show you the other side, 
where I planned this a little bit better. You can see that our main entrance area is a huge path. We have the huge backstage area. And then we have also this rather huge ramp going down, going here to the right hand side. Everything is kept rather huge so that also like vehicles could go there. And then we even have a dedicated road, a backstage road that leads all the way into our gigantic backstage hub. Okay. And from this hub, you can see there's even road running into this area so also everything is interconnected um, and there is a lot of space available so everything is connected the same goes actually for this road you can see this is access to over here and then it is connected to the backstage of this bridge that goes all the way over here and then we have again a dedicated backstage access with the maintenance road that goes into this backstage hub so far so good now this is everything connected on the other hand, there is nothing that connects to this huge part of the zoo. And my idea now is to go in and utilize basically, it might be this backstage area or it might be this point over here where we will have a little bit of a boat connection. If we put a boat down here, the boat could easily go via the river and just go inside here. So the food deliveries and stuff could go super easy into an underground facility that is connected with this backstage area. And this is why we have this access gate over here. I imagine there is just simply a little uh, connection over here down below this thing there is like a, a little hub where everything is connected and then there's going to be a tunnel that leads over here into this and done you know you can deliver everything into this area and from here you spread this basically into this huge um, hub because everything is connected from here so that would work wonders and we could even go and make another connection well we actually already have a connection here but make like a proper backstage connection to this point and then connect this with this parking lot this would be the most elegant way of connecting everything without destroying most of the things and also to be fair we could also try to connect a bit more of this area because that's also pretty much not connected so in this way we would um, have uh, more or less like an implied backstage connection without doing it all too crazily realistic, but still would make it work. And this is why there is this gate here. So yeah, if you guys uh, are interested in the, in the layout, please make sure to just take a screenshot. <laughs> Wait, I'm just going to give you a better shot even. Uh, just take that one as a screenshot and then you can draw in it or whatever and try to figure out where things go and where you would put some backstage stuff if you want to do so. Um, but other than that, I'm just going to zoom back into the uh, habitat, what we have created today. And I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I certainly did enjoy the comeback of Yosemite a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I hope you guys did so as well. Now, I wish you all the best uh, for your week. It's happy hump day, so uh, have a happy day. And if you want today uh, make the day even more happy, you can consider subscribing if you haven't done so. I promise this will make your day more happy and mine as well. Uh, and the sun will shine for someone in this world, I guess. <laughs> so thank you so much uh, for your ongoing support. You guys rock. I hope to hear you in the next one, see you in the next one, talk to you in the next one. Until then, have a good time, stay safe, and goodbye.